my class. In today's class, we will be focusing on the discussion of mountains. Now, first we have to understand that what are mountains? Mountains are the elevated part of the earth's surface and a mountain is characterized by sharp peaks and steep slope. Now, when land masses rise steeply to a few thousand meters above the sea level, then they form the mountains. And again, as I have said that sharp peak, peak is also known as summit. And steep slopes, these are the slopes of the mountain. These two are essentially the characteristic features of a mountain. And mountains are the loftiest topography on the earth's surface. Mountains are classified according to their mode of formation. Fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains. Now fold mountains are the mountains which were formed due to the folding of the earth's crust. Buckling of sediments took place and that is why the fold mountains were formed. These fold mountains are again classified into two categories, the young fold mountains and the old fold mountains. The young fold mountains are characterized by steep slope and pointed summit, for example, the Himalayas, and they were formed, uh, say, about a few hundred million years ago. But the old fold mountains are characterized by gentle slope and rounded summit and they were formed several hundred million years ago. The example of the old fold mountain is the Aravallis. Now you have to know that these fold mountains are also formed due to some forces. Which forces setting in the formation of the fold mountains? The compressional forces. Now these compressional forces are the forces which are acting as lateral pressure. These two are compressional forces and this is resulting in the buckling up of the sediments of the earth's crust and leading to the formation of the fold mountains. In layers, each layer, each successive layer of the fold mountains is characterized by different set of sediments. Now the top part of the fold mountain is known as anticline or upfold. And the lower part of the fold mountain is known as syncline or downfold. Fold mountain formation always takes place at the margin of the plate boundaries. Now this happens because two plates, when two tectonic plates collide with each other, then the edges of the plates, they get folded and the sediments buckle up and give rise to the formation of fold mountains. So this is in brief a description of fold mountains. Now our next segment will be the block mountains. So let me first rub out the boat. Now our next segment of mountains is the block mountains. Movement of the earth's crust sometimes causes cracks or faults on the earth's surface. And the crust gets broken into different crustal blocks. Now here in this diagram you can see that the two raised blocks, they are forming the block mountain. And the subsided part is forming the rift valley. In the formation of block mountains, tensional forces are very, very important. Like uh, in the case of fold mountains, I have mentioned about the compressional forces because in the formation of fold mountains, compressional forces are very, very important. But in the case of block mountains, tensional forces are very important because cracks or faults 
they develop due to these tensional forces. Now, crustal block in between two fault lines subsides along the fault plane, leaving two raised blocks on either side, known as block mountains, and subsided block in between forms a rift valley. So, here in this diagram, you can check that. That the two raised blocks, they are known as the block mountains. And the subsided part is known as the rift valley. The example of block mountains is the Vindhyas and Satpuras. Now, the next category of mountains, which we are going to study now, is the volcanic mountain. Now, volcanic mountains are also known as mountains of accumulation. Okay. Now, follow the boat. Volcanic mountains are made up of molten materials known as magma. Now, what is magma? Magma is the molten rock. Along with ash and small rock particles called cinders. So, I am repeating it once again. Volcanic mountains are made up of molten materials known as magma along with ash and small rock particles called cinders. So here, two terms are very important. One is magma and the other one is cinders. Cinders are the small rock particles and magma means molten rock material. Now next point, on reaching the earth's surface, the magma cools and solidifies. With several successive eruptions, the lava piles up gradually and forms the conical volcanic mountain. So, now you can understand that why volcanic mountains are known as mountains of accumulation. Because volcanic mountains are formed as a result of accumulation of rock debris, which comes out after volcanic eruptions along with magma. And when magma reaches the earth's surface, then it comes in contact with the atmosphere of the earth and it gets cooled and solidifies to lava. Now, here I am giving a diagram. So, follow that. Here I have given a diagrammatic presentation of the volcanic mountain. Here you can see there is a magma chamber. Now the magma means the molten rock material I have already mentioned. These magma under tremendous heat and pressure when they are moving upward through this main vein or main uh, conduit, main passage. It is then coming out through the crater in the form of eruption. Now with the volcanic eruption, the lava is coming out. That means the magma is only coming out and it is getting piled up. With the atmospheric contact, the magma is getting solidified and cooled and turning to lava. So this is actually the lava and this is the main area that is a crater. Now this passage is the conduit. So this is actually the diagram of the volcanic mountain and the rock materials which are coming with this volcanic eruption, these are known as cinders. So, volcanic mountains are categorized into three types. Number one, active volcano. Active volcanoes are those volcanoes which erupt frequently. For example, Mount Etna in Sicily. So, that is an example of active volcano. Other one is extinct volcano. That means these type of volcanoes do not erupt. They have not erupted for several centuries and they will never erupt. These are extinct volcanoes. Like for example, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, in Africa. The third one is the dormant volcanoes. The word dormant means in a sleeping condition. Now these type of volcanoes erupted long time back, but now they do not uh, erupt, but they show the signs of possibility of eruption in future. So this is actually the general description of the volcanic mountains and the different type of volcanoes. Now we will see that what are the importances of mountains. Okay, so let us see. Now let us study about the importance of mountains. 
as mountains play very important role in our lives. First importance of mountains is that glaciers moving down the mountain slopes melt at low altitude and form streams that turn into rivers. Second importance of mountains. Mountains modify the temperature of a place by blocking cold winds and moist winds and force them to shed moisture. Now this is a very important role of the mountains. Third importance. Mountains are areas of dense vegetation and are home to many animals because we know that a wide variety of flora and fauna are available in the mountainous areas. Now what is flora? Flora means vegetation and fauna means animals. Now next point. Terraces are made on mountain slopes to cultivate crops such as rice. Tea, coffee also grow well on hill slopes. We all know that terrace cultivation is done on the mountainous slopes. Now next, mountains are ideal tourist spots. Why? Because mountainous areas are very very picturesque. So they are the ideal tourist spots. So in this class, I have summed up about the definition of mountains, then different categories of mountains like the fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains. I have discussed that fold mountains are formed as a result of buckling up of sediments of the earth's surface and due to compressional forces. Block mountains are formed due to tensional forces and I have already said that volcanic mountains are known as mountains of accumulation and how are they formed. And I have also discussed about the different categories of volcanic mountains, active volcanoes, dormant volcanoes and extinct volcanoes. And lastly, the last part of the chapter of landforms regarding the mountains is the importance of mountains. So, with all these explanations, I think the mountain part is clear to you. But if you have any doubt or any query regarding mountains or if you want to know more about mountains, then you can send me mail in my mail ID that is class at gmail.com. So stay connected with the channel, subscribe it and share all my lecture videos and wait for the third part of the chapter of landforms that is the plateaus. So in my next video, I will be taking class on plateaus. Thank you.